you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let me read you something. It's interesting. Y'all want to stand or sit? Do whatever you want. <laughs> but you, O oh Lord, be merciful and gracious to me in this group. And raise me up that I may requite my enemies. By this I know that you favor and delight in me because my enemy does not triumph over me. There's no enemy going to triumph over you when you know your rights and privileges as a child of the living God. And as for me, you have upheld me in my integrity. The church is being called back to integrity again. You can't come and shout one hour in church and then go curse everything when you leave church the next hour. Yes. Integrity means you're the same. You hold up steady. The word is true no matter what you face, you see. Amen? Amen. And as for me, you have helped, upheld me in my integrity and you have set me in your presence forever. Man, that, that ought to make you excited. Shouldn't that make you excited? No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter where you thought you was going, God says you're going to be in his presence. You're no different than the Hebrew children that got thrown in the fiery furnace. They thought probably at first, they said, no matter what we do, we're not bowing our knee to you, old king. That means this, you young people, you're not going to bow your knee to the world system. No matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, God's blood is big enough for you. His forgiveness is big enough for you. His presence is with you. And no matter what you're facing, he's already in the fire, and he will burn everything that's been holding you down and holding you back, and he'll set you free to sing again. Say, I've been set free to sing again. See? I mean, it's a simplistic message. He's God, and you're his people. He, gave, he died for your sins to set you free, and me. He gave us a covenant sealed in the blood. He gave us faith to activate the covenant. And that faith will generate the power and presence inside of you to give you the power to walk in obedience to the word of the living God. And so as the church of the living God, and when I say the church, the body of Christ, just because there's great congregations does not mean they're the body of Christ. It's those in Luke, Jesus talking to some folks, he said, now you come around here, you talk some pretty big talk. You run around, got your nose stuck pretty high in the air. But he said, why do you even call me Lord, Lord? Because you don't do what I say. See, when somebody's you, Lord, your Lord, you do what that Lord says. Amen? So I won't go on and tell you the rest because it's too scary. But let me tell you this. He not only gives you the mandate, he gives you the power and the wisdom to fulfill the mandate. See, you can't do it in your flesh. You do it by the power of the indwelling spirit of the living God. So I'm excited this morning. It's good to be back. We, uh, we actually wasn't on vacation. Probably a lot of you thought we were. Uh, we met with 10 to 14 leaders and pastors while we was gone. And... Uh, I was talking to them about the anointing of God, the move of God, but we have a, a real mix of people in the mountain that nobody knows about. And I said, I guess God loves them more than he does anybody else. Because I know he does their pastor. He loves their pastor more than he does anybody else. Y'all know I'm joking, you newcomers, don't get mad at me. And I said, there's such a move of God, the presence of God, the anointing of God, it's so real and it's so strong. Yes, and people are just coming to Christ. 
I mean, in that little old shark meeting there that lasted actually four days, but it spanned over about 10 days' time that was here. We had 23 people that I know of, if not more, that got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Well, for the White Mountains, that's a pretty good, pretty good many. We had several born again. We had several healed, and we had demons cast out. I don't understand why the church of the living God would set aside and not deal with demons. When it was the first commandment Jesus gave in the Great Commission. So I guess we're going to have to take up the slack and get the demons cast out of all these other guys' churches. If they'd invite me in, Brother Stevens, I'd go. (laughs) Pastor Stevens, it's so good to have you and your wife today. From down in, he pastors in, down in Sibiku. It's so good to have you here today. You see, there is a great happening in the earth. God calls it divine awakening and a divine order is taking place. And so I talked to... 10 to 14 leaders this week and, and pastors and, and believe it or not and I was with Glenda Rambo she sent her love to all of you she's coming back the end of June she'll be with us for four more days the end of June as a matter of fact I told her when she comes back that we're going to buy an open ended ticket what else is there to do up here other than just get us and bask in the presence of God and meet God head on and let him set you free and build you up and get you equipped to operate in the anointing of God and, and do those things. There ain't much else to do up here, guys. So anyway, I said, you need to just come with an open-ended ticket. I, 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 I don't know if I can do it. I said, you can do it. So we'll just start four days at a time. We're going to just start with four Holy Ghost days. And I'm going to come back and teach for three. We don't want to get out of balance here. (laughs) That'll that'll fill seven days of the week. If y'all got any more time left, do something else. But what I'm saying is this. We're in a serious time in the earth. We have been lullabied to sleep through deception. And God is waking us up to make a difference in this last great move of God. And that's why you're here this morning. Some of you came because you heard it was a radical move of God. Some of you came because you need healing. Some of you came because you want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Some of you come just to see if it was true what they say about me. Some of them I can mention, some I can't. But what I'm saying is this. It doesn't make any difference. Or Robert said he don't care what they say. So long as they're talking. You all came. You all come in. Most of you have experienced a tangible presence of God if you've been here over one or two services. And God is real and alive. And, uh, and I talked to my pastor friends. In, uh, uh, you know, I was in Florida a long time. Uh, I had a church there, Pioneer Church, Pioneer to Second Church. Uh, I got to adding up. My Lord, I, did, I thought I'd been in the ministry about 20 years. I got to adding up. I was a youth pastor at Sheridan Christian Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1977. And that adds up to more than 20-something years, doesn't it? That goes into the 32 or 3-year uh, mark. And what I'm saying is we've endeavored... Even though we've miserably flailed sometimes, we've endeavored to always preach a strong word of God that will bring deliverance and freedom to the men and women that hear it. And we have not backed off of that. I have not got tired of doing that. I'm more excited today about what we're doing than I've ever been in 32 years of ministry. And a lot of that has to do with the receptivity in your heart and your mind sitting right here in this congregation. 